50s, 60s, and, and he was just jacked. I mean, he, he was, he, this is, you know, 1950s, 60s, it was kind of before most of the steroid stuff was hitting. You know, I mean, there were, there were still some steroids back in the 1940s, you know, the Nazis played with that with the troops, but, you know, it didn't really get into the bodybuilding culture until probably the 60s, you know, and then the 70s, you know, it's, you know, knots everywhere, right? right? But he was doing this stuff, and he, if you look up, if you look up Vince Garanda, you look at his physique from the 1940s, 1950s, he's pretty, pretty amazing. And he's just eating meat. He was eating, well, his diet was basically five days of just eating meat and eggs, and steak and eggs, and then every, every one day, like every fifth or sixth day, you could eat, you know, whatever. And so that's what, that's what he did. So that was his diet. So that's what he looked like back in 19, you know, that's probably in the 50s. You know, wow. so, so that's pretty decent for back then. You know, pretty jacked. Well, I mean, for, for, for a non-steroid guy. I mean, this is, yeah, this and is also taking into consideration how little they really knew about training back then, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they didn't know. I mean, if you go back into history, well, we, well, I mean, we can talk about that, but then there was a guy named Larry Scott who was, like, the first Mr. Olympian. He was another guy that was eating just tons of meat, you know, four or five pounds of meat a day, and he won Mr. Olympian. I mean, I, again, you know, there's some of their drug use, you know, and some of this stuff, but I, I was just reading about this stuff. And I was just like, well, I'm, you know, I'm an athlete. I like trying this stuff. And so I said, well, I'm just going to try it for a month. So I did it for a month, and I was like, man, I feel pretty good, right? So I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm just, I was like, I did a month. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go back and go back to my ketogenic diet. And so I started, for that day, I, the day I did, I was like, I'm going to eat some apples, a little, little almond butter, you know, I had some berries and cream, you know, stuff you'd normally eat as a treat. And I just didn't feel as good, you know, like my back started hurting a little bit. And I was like, well, maybe that's where some of So then I went and said, I'm just going to go back to eating meat again. Wait, you know? your back started hurting from eating apples? Well, I mean, it was just like, you know, th this is one of the things that I've seen, and we, and we can talk about this, you know, in detail, but I've seen a lot of people, what they'll say is, you know, and this is what I saw, you know, when I was working as a surgeon, when I put people on a ketogenic diet, their joint pain was starting to go away. Right. I mean, this, was, this was pretty common. A lot of people believe that joint pain is connected to the consumption of uh, simple carbohydrates. Well, I right? think, yeah, I think it's, you know, Refined I don't... Refined carbohydrates. I don't know what it is for sure, but it's something we eat most like, you know, mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, not always, but I think there's something out there we're eating. I'm pretty convinced it's not meat. You know, that's what I can tell you for sure, from what I know. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, sugar, whether it's, uh, you know, processed gluten, or, or wheat or stuff like that, whether it's vegetable oil, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, or, or even some vegetables, potentially. And so this is what I'm seeing, and this is what I saw. You know, I studied these large Facebook groups like an anthropologist. You know, like they used to study these people, you know, 100 years ago, they'd go out, you know, Weston Price would go out and see all these people and study their teeth and stuff. The problem with that is, you, you know, you don't speak their language, you know, it's pretty remote, you can't, you got to translate. And so some of those observations, you know, while they're valid, they're hard to do now. You know, but so when you go in these groups and you just want, you know, all you can do is just like reading this like a scientist going, okay, this guy went on this diet and his joints went away. This guy went on this diet and his thyroid disease went away. This guy went on this diet and his skin got, you know, psoriasis went away. I kept seeing this over and over and over and over again. I mean, thousands of them. But the big thing for most people <coughs> is removing refined carbohydrates, removing sugar, and a lot of people, dairy. Yeah, I would say that if that's a good strategy for most people. You know, here's the deal. I don't care what people eat. You, you eat whatever makes you healthy. You know, I think this is the thing. We have these national guidelines that tell people what to eat, but they're, they don't work for most people. You know, obviously, I mean, look at, look at our country. I mean, it's just it's sad to see all these people that are, you know, really, really getting sick. And so I think, you know, there's a guy named Vinny Torter who has this no sugar, no grain. And I think that will, that will successfully help a huge percentage of people, you know. But I think you have to be objective about it. You have to do it long enough for it to have an effect. You know, I think you have to, um, you know, be, be really cl be really clinical about it. And so one of the big problems I see as a physician, and this is a big problem, is people will go on low-carb diets or ketogenic diets, and they'll say, I feel the best I've ever felt in my life. I mean, my, my mood is better. My, my mental cognition is better. My joints feel better. My guts don't hurt. My skin is better. My sex drive is better. Everything you would say is that means you're getting healthy, and they'll go to their doctor, and they'll get some blood drawn, and their cholesterol will be high. And their doctor will say, well, you're going to kill yourself. You're going to have a heart attack, right? So people get scared away from that, and they go back to eating their other stuff, and they, then they feel crappy again, but they're like, well, at least my cholesterol is not bad. So one of the big problems, and I'm trying to sort of basically preach in this stuff, is I think, and this is a problem with healthcare in general, is we have so gotten away from just defining what's healthy. You know, if somebody comes into your office, and you say, you know, 